What is going on YouTube? This is Jim live from his truck here to give you guys my thoughts on Halo episode five. This episode was called Reckoning and I think it did a really good job of bridging the gap between fans of Halo previous and fans of Halo new because it really did blend the best of everything into one episode with the exception of Quan, and that's where I want to start. Uh, it has been very clear to me and many other reviewers that the Quan story arc has not really gained a lot of traction. And if you look at what happened in this particular episode between Quan and Soren, Soren trying to get Quan back home after this failed revolutionary attempt, which really doesn't hold a lot of weight anyway, the entire episode was spent either her and him talking as they drove through a desert wasteland on a motorcycle, or her trying to break apart a handcuff with various rocks. That was her entire arc. And it was really boring. It took away from pivotal moments that were happening going, you know, with John and some of those other discoveries, particularly with the artifact. Didn't really gain a lot of traction. Ends on a very nonsensical cliffhanger of Quan potentially executing an unconscious Soren. It just really needs to stop. I was hoping, and I, I know I had said this, and I think I'm one of the few people last week who said, well, there may be some redemption here if this story arc with Quan and this discovery of this other thing her father was involved in, which we're not even really sure what it was, but much greater than the revolution. If that actually bears fruit, maybe it's some redemption. But after looking at all the cool things you saw outside of her taking place as the UNSC basically got all their forces together in an attempt to extract the artifact. Um, that was where the action was. That's where everybody wanted to be this week. And every time they cut back to Quan in the desert, it was just grueling and brutal and honestly really sad. Bummed out about that. Really bummed out about that. So I don't know where it's going. I still think Soren's a cool character. I think he got dealt a bad hand. I'm hoping that Quan reunites with Chief. I don't know how far they've gotten into season two of writing the show, but I really think they owe it to themselves to kind of get rid of her. Really, I do. And I don't have anything against the actress personally. I don't know her. She seems to be doing well with the information and the content that she has. It's just not going anywhere. And I don't think people want to invest any more time in it because we've had five episodes now to get to know her and Soren, and it's just not there. The chemistry's not there. Soren's a phenomenal character. Put him with John. Put him with some of the other Spartans. Let's see how he interacts in that regard. Don't put him with her. It's go. It's just, it sucks. So that was definitely the downer of the episode. But thankfully, the good part of the episode was masterclass. I could spend hours and hours talking about that fight scene alone. But some of the other key takeaways, clearly, John's starting to remember. And there was such a heartbreaking scene. And I've talked a lot about this. I've talked about John taking his helmet off. When John puts his helmet on, to me, John is the soldier. He's the super Spartan that we all know and love. He gets stuff done. And when he takes his helmet off, that's when he's just petty officer John, you know, John Spartan, right? Sierra 117. And he's more of a man at that point. We're starting to see those lines blending together, and I loved it. Um, the, particularly, he had his helmet off, and he was talking to Keys. And he was confiding in Keys that he knew Miranda was part of his life at childhood. And he remembers now being abducted. He said he was replaced with something, as we know that is the Flash clone. If you're curious about any of the storyline, by the way, highly recommend you read, read the book called The Fall of Reach. It is also an animated series, but the book is a thousand times better. And it explains in very specific detail how Spartan 2s were selected how Spartan 2s were trained, and how they were basically hidden from society via these Flash clones. It's a very, very interesting read. Um, the fact that John confides in Keys, and Keys was just as guilty as Miranda, and he's like, I promise you, John, soldier to soldier, man to man, I will look into this. Um, I really felt bad for John there. He's really being really, really yanked around pretty bad right now, and it's sad to me that he hasn't been able to figure out the whole story yet. And maybe he will, and maybe that's going to be part of his arc going into Season 2, that he is much more of a rogue element. 
I don't really know, but it's sad to see that. And I love that scene in particular. It really, I think, exemplifies a lot of the problems with the UNSC. I know I talked about this in previous reviews. UNSC is not as lovey-dovey, fluffy as we, we want them to be. They're actually quite evil in... We haven't even seen Oni at the Office of Naval Intelligence. I don't know if or when they're going to make an appearance in the show, but they're even worse than the UNSC proper. So uh, curious to see how that lays out. Um, also, sticking with the Keys storyline, it was sad to see that Miranda, who's finally starting to come into her own, uh, was basically told by her father to stop researching the artifact because he's trying to keep her hands clean of the situation. Uh, little does he know she's probably not going to stop. And, you know, she is starting to uncover secrets, too. So it, it turns out the Keys family, just like in the books, just like with the kind of what we know of the lore of the Keys situation and what ultimately unfolds there. Obviously, Kathleen Halsey definitely at the center of this massive controversy. And John just being a good soldier and a good friend, uh, unknowingly, dumb, dumbingly, I know that's not a word, unwillingly, definitely uh, just being dragged along. And it's sad to see. Um, the other key moment of this episode, and I'll talk about the major fight scene in just a moment, uh, when John basically breaks the mission in order to go off and save, um, his friend who also took her inhibitor, her inhibitor chip out or inhibitor pellet, I think they're calling it, uh, took that out. And that was really shocking to see the mission largely failed because of him going back to save her. And, you know, while she was able to, she, you know, got very afraid, basically dropped her weapon and cowered in fear. Uh, John basically hard harnessed all of his anger. And instead of being a ruthless killing machine, basically enjoyed slaughtering an enemy to death and growling and very, very menacing, very guttural, like an alien, like an animal, right? Um, you typically don't see that from Spartans. They're cool, calm, collected. They, they do what they need to do to get the job done. They're not sugarcoating anything. Uh, they may do, they may take some enjoyment in it, but they're efficient killers. They're ruthless. They get what they need to do and they move on. John clearly letting his emotions take control of him and really being aggressive and, um, obviously has a lot to be pent up about being shut down by Cortana earlier. That was very interesting. Seems like this iteration of the relationship between John and Cortana is very different, very much more uh, strained than in the past. I'm sure that's a lot to unpack in the next episode. I'm really looking forward to that discussion. Um, and then obviously, you know, failing the mission. So really, really key points, I think, of character development and major, major story arc moments that were incredibly impressive. The fight itself, of course, is what most people are going to remember. Most likely, it's going to be the jackal who is crawling uh, with his bottom half completely removed, entrails dangling in the wind. As uh, you know, that was that was an amazing, amazing look. We finally got to see the uh, the grunts, um, the ungoy, as they're called, uh, hijack a warthog, which was amazing. So there and there, we just see, finally got to see a brute. So all these people saying, "Oh, you know, the the show creators don't even understand anything about Halo." When push comes to shove, we have a major battle. Everybody was there. Everybody was there to fight, and it was amazing. Really, really well put together fight scene. Amazing. John hijacking the Banshee and crashing it into the Wraith was awesome. Uh, really, really enjoyed uh, seeing all of that kind of unfold. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what we want to see. So very, very good. 10 out of 10. Um, I continue to love this show. I continue to be fascinated by the show. And it does wonderful, wonderful things for me. So I'm looking forward to in the future, just kind of seeing where we're going to take, um, you know, John's character development. Obviously, the Spartans becoming more self-aware, understanding that emotion is kind of hurting them, but being happy and exposed to that. Will they be reprogrammed? Will more Cortanas be unleashed into the wild? I don't know where the show's going to go. This is very radically different than anything I've read or played, and I'm in love with it for that. Absolutely in love with it for that. Um, I can't wait to see where things devolve next. And really quickly, as I wrap up, I want to say there's eight episodes uh, of this show, and I, or maybe six. I was going to look really quickly. Um, there's still a lot left to handle. I mean, you got to think this artifact now with the, you know, with McKee now coming down, I feel like we're going to see. I feel like we had a lot of episode. We we had a lot of action on the last episode. Um, and I'm curious to see what McKee, her role is with John as they link up. 
clearly they're both in, they're both connected by this artifact, but we're not really sure how um, that's going to interact. You know, at the end, she kind of shows up, make it look good. To, you know, she's now basically involved with him, which is really, really cool as well. Um, I was going to look up that, but that's fine. Um, I was going to talk a little bit more about some of the battle scene stuff, but you know, I'm sure other people are going to, are, are going to uncover it better and talk about it a lot more than I am. Um, I just want to say that, you know, in hindsight, looking back at how everything basically went down, it was really, really cool to see that we have so many different touch points of what Halo is. And if I had explained to anybody, like, you know, in my opinion, what I feel like Halo really stands for and really look at it and say, okay, you know, what episode of Halo do you need to see to understand the mythic, the, the, the overarching mythos of this, you know, the forerunner technology and how that interacts with things, the ruthlessness of the covenant, the shadiness of the UNSC. I would say that this episode, more than any other episode, even episode one, which kind of sets the table, really did a good job of capturing my love for Halo. So awesome job to those guys. I'm so excited to see where this goes in the future. And I will be back again next week to give you guys my thoughts on the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.